fact, if you look at this Celtics team, the current Celtics team that's beating up on the current inferior Heat team, they actually remind me of old school Heat, the Heatles with LeBron. Let me explain. If you start to look at this position by position, let's say, let's start with Jason Tatum. He would be your LeBron James in this case. There are nights, Heat fans will tell you. I mean, LeBron got there and they drove him nuts. I mean, LeBron, what are you doing? Are you going to take the last shot? Are you going to give it to Wade? There was a little bit of deferring there, especially early Heatles. Once they figured it out, we know what it was. Best player on the floor, offensive bag, endless. They can do everything. Also, both players elevate the guys around them. Say what you want about Jason Tatum. You can look at the numbers. Yes, he scores. But this isn't Carmelo Anthony we're talking about here. This isn't a guy that's just a stat stuffer. This isn't a guy that gets the ball, dribbles the air out of it, gets the shot clocked up four or five, and then chucks up a shot. That's not what Jason Tatum does. Jason Tatum can pass. Jason Tatum crashes boards. He has an all-around versatile game. Guys love playing on Jason Tatum's team, just like they love playing on LeBron's team. So Tatum and LeBron, to me, have some similarities. How about Jalen Brown? You know where I'm going here, don't you? It's Dwayne Wade. Two freak athletes who can attack the rim with reckless abandon. Maybe the best in the league or, or in that conversation, right? Also, streaky shooters. Guys, that if they get hot, I don't care if you have a hand in their face. They're going to knock it down, okay? But also, if you get an open look for Jalen Brown, you get an open look for Dwayne Wade and his prime, they can knock down the shot. So they're good enough shooters, certainly streaky shooters, but rim attackers, freak athletes. Again, just like I said with Tatum and LeBron, Dwayne Wade and Jalen Brown able to uplift those around them, make their teammates even better, take over games in moments. So I see the comparison there. Chris Bosh and a healthy... Healthy, Chris Stapps Porzingis. Do you not see the similarities there? Unique skill set for their size. Both guys okay with, happy with being the third option. Great teammates, willing to do what it takes to win. Now, obviously, the Heatles won a title, and we'll see how the Celtics story ends. But the comparisons are there, especially early on, Heatles, compared to current Celtics. Now, this is where I'm going to lose you, but stay with me. <laughs> I'm going somewhere here. There's a method to my madness. Stay with me. Spo, early Spo, and Joe Missoula. Now, you think of Eric Spolstra current, and you say, Travis, he's one of the best coaches in the league, if not the best. He's an all-time great coach. Of course he is. But I'm talking early iteration of the Heatles. Eric Spolstra was a young, unproven, hardworking, a little quirky, unproven coach that no one knew anything about. Everyone said, why isn't Pat Riley coaching this team? <laughs> Did we not hear that with Brad Stevens, with the transition from Stevens to Ime? And then we know what happened with Ime. But look, Joe Mazzulla is young and unproven. He's not perfect. We criticize him. You don't think Eric Spolstra was getting criticized early? In fact, I would argue it's more pressure on Joe Missoula because Boston gives a damn. Miami doesn't care. They didn't care. Now, you get, obviously, LeBron James. You got D. Wade, who had already won a title. You got all, okay, yeah, now they're engaged. But when the Heat are losing, no one gives a damn. When the, uh, Listen, Miami, with all due respect, I love visiting there. You're great. You are not Boston in terms of media pressure, fan pressure, people caring about sports here. You're just not. Don't at me. It's the truth. You know it and I know it. But Spo early on was young and unproven, just like Joe Missoula. Now we'll see what Joe Missoula does, but the comparisons are there. And then finally, I mentioned him, Pat Riley. But for the Heatles, we're just talking front office Pat Riley here. So I'm not comparing Brad Stevens and Pat Riley as coaches. I would never do that. But as front office people, you can see the comparisons. We'll see if Brad Stevens is able to accomplish the things Pat is. 
But this whole comparison I'm doing is not based on accomplishments. It's based on comps. It's based on comparisons. It's based on similarities. So I look at this and I say, okay, Pat Riley put the heatles together, had to do some convincing. Guys had to take pay cuts. You got egos involved. You got to move and shake. You got to make some things happen to even bring it together. Those three were so dominant, so expensive. Yeah, I mean, you're basically filling out the rest of your roster with the league minimum, with bottom of the barrel. The Celtics are in a different situation financially than that. But if you notice now, guys are getting the bag. They're starting to wrap this up. Tatum's about to get an even bigger one. Jalen's already got paid. So Brad Stevens deserves some credit for being a mover, for being a shaker, willing to roll the dice as a front office member now. So I'm just saying, we'll see how the story plays out. But I'm seeing a lot of similarities between the Heatles' early stages and the current Celtics team now, beating the hell out of the current Heat team now. There's nowhere near their glory days.